from Saturday. Saturday? Uh huh. Just black and yeah. whites. Yeah. Yeah. All right. It's five thirty. Our our chair and vice chair, neither of them uh, could be here this evening, so I'll go ahead and and wrangle the agenda for the evening. So. 5.30, I'll call this meeting to order. I'm also going to take notes at the same time, so bear with me. Okay. Public comments? There are none. Yeah. <laughs> per uh, usual. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Um, approval of minutes from... Uh, the last meeting we had, which was about a lifetime ago, <laughs> do, 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 which was September 21st, 2020. Um, I'll give you a second to look those over if you need to, and then whoever wants to jump out in motion, make a motion to approve those. Can I make a motion to approve? Have a motion from Josh. Do you want a second? I would love a second. Sure, I'll second. Awesome. I guess without me, I'm the third. <laughs> Correct. <laughs> Mike, there's a spot on the corner over there that okay. has a packet of um, uh, thrilling paperwork that we're going to look at tonight. Yeah. Do, 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 do. Okay, so Rebecca seconded the minutes. Uh, all in favor, or any questions or thoughts about the minutes before we vote on them? None. All in favor say aye. Aye. Anybody opposed to those minutes? All right, this minutes approved. Moving on. Okay, um, the first. Uh, Oh, let's see, item number four, discussion and possible action regarding the 89er celebration request for event funding. What you have in front of you is the exact same request that was approved last year. Um, obviously, 89er celebration did not happen last year, so that funding was not uh, issued even though it was approved since they didn't have any events the only thing that's different on this year's uh, uh, request is just some contact information they have a different chairperson this year um, jerry ball is the chair again for their event as opposed to mr Dewart, who was the chair last year so um, there is other than mr ball's name and contact information that entire request uh, is 100% the same uh, as what was submitted for last year's event. Any questions about uh, their request? They are going to have a carnival, as usual, uh, the 14th through the 17th. Uh, the parade will be on the 17th. I'll take my glasses off so I can actually see you guys. Um, and a couple of things I haven't been given specific uh, dates on. In the past, they've had one of their events was the, the bed race on uh, Oklahoma Avenue. I think that they're in the process of planning that, but I haven't been given an exact date on the bed race. Um, and there have been, uh, Let's see, I think if I heard from the mayor that they were looking at maybe a street uh, street dance party on one of the evenings downtown, but I haven't been given a date uh, or specifics on that. For right now, it's carnival and parade as usual, for sure, with some possible um, other events that get thrown in there. There's a, there's a yes. Mike, you have any car show information you want to share? Um, just that it's on. Cool. Um, I guess we, we got, we were kind of, well, we just found out about it last minute, of course. We were sure that 
the event was going to happen, or 89ers was going to happen, and, but we've got all of our sponsorships taken care of, which we do try to do that before we tell people we're doing it, make sure we have the money to pay for it. So it'll be Friday the 16th, same place that we've always done, so down in Oklahoma, um, and I can't remember the where, how far east we go. I think, yeah. I say I'm not going to give you the right, but same path as we've done every year. Cool. So, seems like there's a lot of excitement about it. So. I'm getting a lot of questions about the parade route with the what? Um, the only way that they'll be able to hear you is if you come over, sit, sit over here. <laughs> What's the? <laughs> <laughs> questions about the parade route. Oh, the parade route should be the same, the, the usual parade route um, that it always is. Um, I, it sounds like the, the construction on um, uh, Harrison, Harrison and Wentz, that, uh, that route, uh, the construction should be far enough along where um, they can uh, basically push those barricades back to where the, the parade can, can get through there. Um, at the end of the, the, the route. So the, the parade route shouldn't be any different than, than usual. Um, they're saying f that they had 15,000 people in 2019 Correct. at the 89er celebration. How, how, how did they come up with that number? Um, I'm guessing that it's an estimation. And I'm guessing they're including all week's activities added together. Yes, sir. I would assume so. And I don't know where they get the 50. And that seems like a big number. Because that's me. bigger than the population of Guthrie. By 5,000. <laughs> <Now, I, laughs> I have seen the streets that crowded from storefront to street but not in the last 10 years for the parade I'm talking about. As a board, do you all feel, I mean, do, uh, do you feel like the request, that the amount that they're requesting is, um, is the exposure, the event, is it worth the city spending that or the tourism spending that amount of money? Do you feel like you get it back in Yeah, I think that stays where the money comes from, you know, like, does it, does it replenish? I see what you're saying. Does it, does it actually result in people staying? Instead of coming they they say I, three to 300 to 500 overnight stays come off of this event. That seems also seems pretty high to me, but I'm not in that space. So if all that's real, then 3000 seems like, yeah, roll with it. But if that's like, they're not really gonna ask. Let's just put down a number. <laughs> then maybe it doesn't make sense. I don't know. Yeah, even even in my opinion, uh, even if the the hotel count isn't that high, I think 89ers uh, like culturally, in terms of like quality of life for the community, uh, I think it's a it's a worthwhile investment on the city's end. Cool. I mean, I, I enjoy it. I, I, I like it as someone who lives downtown and, I'll, you know, my kids like it. And, you know, I'm a big fan of the event as a resident. I just mm -hmm. wanted, you know, on a number side, does that all make sense? So. I don't see anything in here, but a lot of other events, like, have to consider COVID restrictions. Sorry. Um, are they accounting for anything like that? The, at present, the city of Guthrie doesn't have any um, uh, any COVID restrictions on public events. Okay, so no sanitizing or anything. We we highly encourage it, but there's nothing required of, of event coordinators uh, from Guthrie City Council. Okay. In my mind, Six Flags just sent us a thing on it, so sure. <laughs> I was like, huh. Are we 
we I just have a question here. Are we actually fixing a vote to approve this or not approve this? Um, if Along you with the I guess the Independence Day thing, all that kind of stuff. The option would be to and how what the motion would be if if the board if someone wanted to make the motion would be to ad advise the the city to approve the event support. And then it goes to city manager for for final approval. Right. So I guess my question is a year and a half ago the CVB board nominated a policy to do all funding requests at the same time. Everything will be done at the same time at the same meeting where everybody comes in and speaks about it and then we get all the information there. That was the policy that do I, am I the only one that remembers that? This year, when you've got everybody. You know, no, I understand. But I mean, I'm just saying we're not, are we going to, so we're, we're talking about chopping up $1,000 of how much are we budgeted for? We've got a, the budget category for special event funding is $20,000 for okay. this year. Right. So are we changing the way that we're going to make suggestions? Right, because we said the, the policy was that everybody went around the room, said, you know, we're all going to do it at one time, get all the suggestions at one time, get everybody in the same room at one time, everybody talk about it, get all the information, ask any questions you want. But that will be the only meeting where things are approved by the board for, uh, for, for funding uh, 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 suggestions and things like that. I mean, is that, are we good, do we have to? still abide by that and give anybody else a chance who wants to put on an event fair notice to come? I mean, how, that's what I'm saying. We're kind of going against ourselves on this one. I don't think it necessarily makes sense to, to, to structure things like that this year with, you know, when our budget year began in October, there was literally no way to plan for uh, a public event at that point. So having everyone uh, who uh, was hoping to plan an event in Guthrie, submit applications in October when they had no idea if they were like how to budget for an event or anything. So I think that process, while it works uh, really well in normal years, uh, didn't wasn't functional and practical for this budget year for our, for our event uh, okay, coordinators. So we're going to continue to have monthly meetings and take on requests and do them individually as they come along throughout the fiscal year for the rest of this year? That's one way of doing it, correct. Okay. I was just saying that's just not what our policy is. I don't know if we need to make a, a motion to suspend that or, or whatever, if it actually makes a difference. I'm just saying. No. Um. You know, that's, I remember that being a, a big debate. No big deal. I'm just, no. because we, we have X amount of dollars budgeted out, and we already said we're not, we're only going to do one round, you know, to be able to be able to spend the budget. Right. Right. I think um, a reason why I don't think that would be necessary this year. Uh, we're in March. We're we're five months into our current budget year, mm -hmm. with and we're just now getting uh, uh, these two requests. I'm assuming that we'll probably get the standard request from Bluegrass Festival and uh, uh, Christmas. Uh, even if both of those events come in with the 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 request amount that they have uh, previously for for those for the four primary like annual events that we typically look at that still puts us in under budget which would give us uh, uh, some uh, some leeway there if we fought if you know some folks come to us for event request funding that are new in the community I think we'll still have that opportunity even if even if blue even if uh, you guys uh, vote to recommend these two requests tonight uh, and if bluegrass and Christmas uh, stuff comes in later uh, and those are recommended as well I think budget wise we still we still have should have um, 
some some money left over if there are some new events that that come a calling. Yeah, I, mean, I, I think as a as a town, I think the important thing is not necessarily what we have said we were going to do in the past, but it's let's help our town get back to a sense of normalcy and community. And I think these events are part of what makes Guthrie Guthrie and and has become expected as part of our community. So I think, you know, for me personally, I, I would make a motion uh, to suggest approval of these events uh, for both the 89er celebration as well as the application for event support for the fireworks celebration. Um, I, th I think what he's trying to address is do we have a procedure that we're not following and we should acknowledge if we're going to suspend that procedural process for this fiscal year then address them individually. But I think what the question is are we following procedures that we established and I have no problem with saying we're going to suspend it because of the COVID-19 situation but I think that's the question is are we going to follow procedures that we have set before we should acknowledge that we are not so we act least like we know what we're doing sure um, thank you <laughs> <laughs> there's not a procedure put in place via our the, the bylaws of this committee or this board so uh, how it, in terms of event support funding applications um, we're not trying we're not voting to change a, a bylaw we uh, so uh, I'd have to go actually go back and look at the minutes from whenever that was to determine whether that was something we actually like voted on to in perpetuity to do it that way or if we voted on it for a specific budget year for FY 20 I have to go back and see that's fine I don't think that uh, personally uh, from the staff's point of view I don't think that uh, from an advisory perspective uh, there's anything that would prohibit the board from making that recommendation tonight uh, via a motion uh, even if uh, the board had voted previously to, you know, receive all requests at one time, vote on it at the beginning of the year. Um, I don't believe there's anything, since it's not included in the bylaws of the board, I don't believe there's anything that would prevent the board from making a recommendation this evening. Well, I would make a motion for the board to recommend approval of the 89er celebration application event support as well as the fireworks event application event support let's let's stick with 89ers time. for now okay. so jo uh, josh has a motion uh, to approve the event support funding uh, request is there a second there is okay Sean seconded. Uh, okay, before we vote, are there any other questions regarding the 89ers uh, application? All right, hearing no questions or concerns, um, all in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, on to the land of fireworks. Um, the fire, fireworks show or presentation or whatever you want, how you, you want to refer to it, typically uh, it's taken place around the 4th of July. Uh, traditionally, the last uh, however long it's been going on, four or five years. This past year, it was delayed because of, uh, of COVID uh, context to around Christmas time. And they ended up, if you, if you didn't see it, they ended up doing that fireworks show over in Cottonwood Flats. Um, and that went off pretty successfully, I think. 
everybody um, that I've heard from thought that was really pretty pretty lovely. I think that uh, the the downtown fireworks show I think still has a little more uh, oh I don't know, gusto to it. I think people wouldn't seem to enjoy being able to, to sit, sit in their chairs um, downtown. <clears throat> and the plan is for that, the fireworks show to, to go back to downtown this this year, this summer, in conjunction with the, the July Red Brick Nights event. Um, there's still some back and forth going on on when exactly that July Red Brick Nights evening will be. Um, so there's not, a, it could be July 3rd, which is, uh, that, that's first Saturday, but um, the, uh, the Hoovers who run the fireworks stand and do the fireworks presentation or show, um, <clears throat> they're kind of wrangling some logistics on, that's typically their, their biggest sales day. And so, you know, kind of shutting down their, their, um, their business for that day to do the fireworks show, um, they're trying to figure that out. So, um, and I think that they, with the, uh, with the fireworks show uh, being pretty well received on the flats at Christmas time, I think they're also mulling the idea over of possibly doing another fireworks show at Christmas, possibly. But uh, for our uh, intents here, uh, it's just looking at another fireworks show around the 4th of July. So are we voting, this is December 5th, 2020, on this, right? Am I reading that right? Does it say post? Are you that, reading the post event? Yeah, that was what they report? turned in for their post event report. Disregard. No problem. So we're talking about. Yeah, yeah this, this coming we, summer, yes. So we approved for July of last year, which got moved. Correct. Okay. They were able to. Uh, the the insurance policy that they purchased uh, this past year, uh, it, they had they were, had a, a wide date range okay. with their their policy, and so they were able to use that same insurance policy for their uh, December show. I felt like the December show was rather lengthy. <laughs> Like longer than their normal show. Yeah, I didn't. Oh. I didn't time it out. Their normal shows are pretty long too. Yeah. Yeah. It's a good time. It is. <laughs> yeah, you're like oh, that kid. Oh no, here, we're still going. <laughs> yeah. The. Um, I guess in terms of of getting our money's worth. We got it. Yeah, that that fireworks show is is not a short no. experience. Uh uh. No, people seem to like it. Yeah. So they have they have a fireworks stand as well. Yes, um, they typically set up there at the southwest corner of Division and Harrison. Uh huh. But that that parking lot, I believe is unavailable to them this year. So they haven't, they haven't secured a, a location for their stand, to my knowledge, yet yeah. for this year. The one that's normally where those cars are? Correct. Right? Yeah. Okay. If I remember correct, they do, they fund a lot of this themselves. Yeah. Correct. Yeah, I think. Some, some, some. Yeah. I, I do have a question the, on the expense side here. It lists insurance shirts and banners and the biggest item the 20,640 isn't identified what is that I believe that's just the cost of the things that blow up so if you look at the previous page page two of their actual application event support 25,000 is for fireworks okay. so I think that that is probably that 2640 is probably fireworks but just wasn't Identified. Yeah.
Any other thoughts, questions about large explosions? You said, typic, you said what is the actual traditional request off, off the top of your head for Christmas and Bluegrass Festival? Um, Christmas has typically been the uh, the five thousand cap, okay. uh, which is how the, the the maximum someone can request through this okay. program, and then um, bluegrass is typically three, I believe, or twenty five hundred. So, but even if they were both at five, we would still only be at eighteen thousand if we approved. Uh, both of these tonight. Yeah, and the timing of the 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 funding, the event support funding for uh, the Christmas events in, in previous years, how that timing has worked out. But they they typically have used the event support funding for advertising in what would be our our current fiscal year. Um, so there's always the option of. You know, if you know, if we approve an event support funding for them, uh, we could move that into the following fiscal year. Uh, I think that might be a, an option that the Christmas committee could be fine with, if for some reason, um, you know, budget-wise, the tourism industry does something horrific the rest of this year, but. Uh, so that's that's an option is to, to move that request into the following budget year if we since had the to. event actually happens in the following budget year anyways yeah and so our since our budget year next budget year begins October first right. that still gives uh, you know three months if they uh, if they were amenable to that kind of thing and not using event support funding for advertising in this uh, this current budget year that's an option. I make a motion for the board to suggest approval, recommend approval for fireworks celebration. I'll second. Okay. Motion by Josh, second by Mike. Any other questions, concerns, thoughts about the event support funding request by uh, fireworks of poppin'? Okay. All in favor say aye. 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 Anybody opposed? All right, motion carries unanimously. Okay. Moving on to staff comments. Um, Verla, do you want to talk into your microphone? I don't know. Just keep talking. Okay, I'll just talk. <laughs> well, um, to have a comment. Okay, right now is a great tourism time in Guthrie. <laughs> so, because we've had back to back Lazy E events that have brought thousands of people, the Cinch event that just got done over the weekend merged right into the BFI, which is short for Bob Feist Invitational or International Invitation, um, which is a an enduring 30-year event that happens in Las Vegas, but they moved here last year uh, so they could use their Lazy E Arena and they came back. So that's great. And then it goes right into the next event, which is the 19th through the 21st, which is another team roping winter classic. So it's really, uh, on Friday and Saturday, there were so many people in town with cowboy hats and belt buckles and everything. And, and when you ask where they're from, they're from everywhere. Uh, the mayor even met someone from Portugal. So this kind right. of things bring a lot of people in. So um, I'm still looking for volunteers because uh, we have a, a, a welcome center at the gazebo as well as the tourist office over next to Hoboken and also uh, Chamber of Commerce is keeping their office open during the same hours uh, through the week and some on the weekend to have uh, materials to give people. So I have those materials for you tonight so you can see what we do and how we approach people and how people love our stickers and make friends with the, the kids and the, 
the parents. But um, and then we just have spring break, and every year that I've lived here for eight years, people come here for spring break. They're looking for, you know, something laid back and bed and breakfast or one day visit to Guthrie. Um, but Stacy scheduled a uh, ghost walk for tonight, and I talked to several people that we're going to call her today and and get on that list. So there's things that happen, even though we we think that we're just kind of getting started again. It's exciting to me to talk to people that are ready to do the tourist thing. So I'm looking for little two two hour shifts to the public, to our board, uh, anybody that would like to be a greeter. It's easy and it's fun. And you have any questions? The, the, uh, the merchants have a little poster to go in their windows that say, take, uh, break it easy, welcome to spring break in Guthrie. They have materials to give out that show the shoppers. Uh, it's called a walk-in shop, and so it follows you down the street to tell you what you're looking at. If what you're looking for is coffee or uh, a boutique or something, it, it tells you as you walk along what's, what's going on there. So I've had some great volunteers uh, this week and continuing through next Sunday. So that's all I have. And I believe. So, so you've got some volunteers, like two hour slots mm -hmm. available now. Yes. Cool. So if yes. anybody wants to volunteer mm -hmm. for a look and sign you up. 10 to, two, 10 to 12, 12 to 2, 2 to 4. So every two hours, whatever you want to do, if you want to do one hour, I'll get somebody for that other hour. So then um, choose where you want to be. And sometimes it's not just waiting for someone to walk in the gazebo. You actually see somebody going by with that tourist look in their eye, like, where am I? You, you run out and you say, hey, visiting Guthrie. You harass Guthrie. them. Yeah, yeah I'm, so I'm you, really good at it. And they like me and, you know, we <laughs> laugh. And <laughs> so. Uh, but, do you need some this weekend? Yes. This, every day. I had some. Because, yes, every day. <laughs> huh? The, well, and, and the locations of the gazebo, the tourism season. office. And we're not manning the Chamber of Commerce that are doing that. Okay. So 10 to 4, two hours in there somewhere. And I got you 2 to 4 on Saturday. Mm -hmm. So we're not giving them an armload of things. It ends up being like, like this, just something light to give them. Explain that there's a map inside our, our regular brochure. Um, and then just have a nice conversation about Guthrie. Okay. So he's your man on Saturday. Oh, says. you are? Okay. Yeah. Okay. At the tourism I've office. I've got somebody already at 10 to, 10 to 12, so what time do you want? 2 to 4. 2 to 4, Saturday. That'll be a busy day because, well, just because it's Saturday. So Sunday will be laid back, everybody going home. I'll just take care of the gazebo myself. But the rest of the week we need. I had some teenagers in there today that are on school break, and after they got warmed up, they had a great time talking to, to people. Good. Handing out things. Being proud about where they live. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I like that. I like the, the sign that says "Home of the Lazy E's." You come in on Oh, good. Yeah. That's Verla's idea. <laughs> well, those are based on the sticker that we had made a couple years a year ago by uh, Sean Hancock Designs, and um, we so we went with the cowboy theme, and we went together with the city of Edmond because we were doing tables out there together, uh, booths at the events, and that has kind of changed over this COVID year, and. Uh, too many people and too much dust and things like that. So, but it's not that we're abandoning that idea, but we had these to pass out. It says visit Edmund. It's their logo on the bottom and our logo on the top, Guthrie. So we asked Sean to just adjust that and just make it from Guthrie. And that's what they put on the big vinyl banners that you see entrances to uh, Guthrie on Highway 77 and Highway 33. So they turned out nice. They're big, but they got to. So people are driving by, they'll see it. And we can take them down when there's not much going on and put it back up the next time, especially that uh, things are hopping at Lazy E and it covers all that base. Which, by the way, we've had a banner for a while, uh, several years ago, when the Little Bridges first started coming. And it specifically welcomes Little Bridges. And we still have that to use. But this adds to it. And we had the royalty, the little princesses and queens of Little Bridges, which comes in July. And they were here, and they did the gazebo for one, a shift for me. They had fun. They were had lots of sparkly things and buckles and things. But the the banners that are up there now are 
there, there's no date or specific lazy e events on them, so we can just put them up during the the bigger events of the year out at lazy e. Um, anything else, Bella? I, I could hear you. <laughs> um, I'll go through a few things. Uh, in terms of calendar stuff, uh, we already talked about 89ers. Mike talked about car show. Uh, a new event this year in Guthrie is the Guthrie Renaissance Fair. That's going to be down in the Cottonwood Flats on May 8th and 9th. Uh, the, the annual Renaissance Fair that happens in Norman uh, has... Uh, They've got just some, some issues with uh, that happening as normal there. And so uh, John Pagonis, who has the, the Guthrie haunts north of town, he took it upon himself to, uh, to recruit uh, an entire world of vendors and entertainment and different things. And he's going to take a, a stab at a Guthrie Renaissance Fair this year. So it has the potential to be really, really cool. The folks who are involved in that world are, are they're passionate about <laughs> that stuff. So, uh, if you if, if if the whenever folks ask me what the a Renaissance fair, I, I just kind of it's like medieval things, and just go with that. And so um, it could be really really cool. And his hope is that it's successful enough that they can become you know a, a big annual festival in Guthrie. So, I think Cottonwood Flats is just is set up perfectly for something like that, and I think it has an awful lot of potential. So uh, hopefully that goes well. And I think originally he was going to make it a uh, like free admission and then like paid parking, but after meeting with the public works staff on and seeing how exactly that location works for other how it's worked in the past for other festivals, he switched gears to where now it's going to be free parking. But then um, a minimal like five dollar admission charge for folks to to five get in. Advance, okay, five in advance, ten at the door. So um, that's. Uh, and the Norman Renaissance Fair, you had to you had to pay to go to that, right? Or no? I, I don't know. I'm not sure. I, can't I don't remember. remember. I mean, I grew up in Norman, but I, uh, you know, and I. Huh? You would think I would know, right? <laughs> yeah, I know. I just remember going to it, and yeah. there being lots of people. Yeah. Um, and obviously, there's that. Um, Holly starts the uh, the big castle. Muskogee. Muskogee. There it is, and that draws thousands and thousands of people. You know, yeah. so be cool. Let's see if uh, they can get something going. Yeah, at least on the vendor side, like it's like it's been incredibly successful for him so far, just in terms of like recruiting vendors That's and entertainment awesome. for it. Well, what's the date on that again? Just May eighth uh, and ninth. There you go. There you go. Take your mom and joust with her. If TV, yeah. Station. Right. TV stations, cars, all three of them covered it heavily. So it gets publicity. Yeah. I think it has a lot of potential. So. That's awesome. Even if you're not into jousting. <laughs> but I who's think. not into jousting? Right? <laughs> you, you can at least come out right, and come on. Yeah, eat some good food. and. Right. Yeah. Um, Red Brick Nights is looking at, uh, like mentioned earlier, uh, kicking off this year uh, in July. Uh, typically, it's been May through September, but uh, it's looking like it's going to be a July, August, September uh, schedule for this year. And let's see, we talked about fireworks already. I'm just going to go through the entire year of big events. Um, Bluegrass Festival, those dates are September 30th, October 1st, and October 2nd. Um, Christmas stuff, the parade, that date is, uh, you know, the usual day that it's always is that no, the Saturday after Thanksgiving, which is November 27th, uh, the Victorian walks, December 4th and 11th, um, two years ago, um, a gentleman organized a, a, a three race series of gravel bike races that started and finished in Guthrie. Uh, it took last year off because of, you know, uh, but they are on the schedule again for this year. So that'll be September 26th, October 10th, and October 24th. Uh, so the, the start and finish line for those races will be down at Wentz 
and Oklahoma. I think that uh, I think since so many things in that world got canceled this past year, uh, even this spring, those organized events have been not their usual thing. Uh, so I think stuff this summer and this fall in that world is going to be really, really successful. So I'm, I'm excited to see how that turns out this year. You said the 26th, the 3rd, and the 10th? Uh, the 10th. 26th, October 10th, and October 24th. I believe he has, um, uh, I don't think the registrations are up yet for those, but he does have the like Facebook events up for those. Yeah, I mean, even for the socially distanced Mid-South, I mean, they had 500 people around the country yeah. participate in that race this week, or, you know, this weekend. And um, <clears throat> there was a number of, I mean, unbound gravel sold out, 2,500 racers very quickly. There's a race in May in Bentonville, Arkansas, rule of three race that race sold out in a couple hours um by a couple thousand people so um, yeah people are just starved for this stuff at this point and loving and gravel is just on such a massive climb interest wise yeah so and the setting for that start and finish line is going to be pretty great um with the distillery opening the the bar next door to their space with the patio area and different things that kind of just lends itself to to more events down there so that's gonna be pretty cool when's that happen when are they opening that up um the not to box them into a, a timetable but the last i heard i think they're shooting for like around the beginning of may um, um um the last thing event wise I have talked with uh, with event, an event coordinator who's possibly looking at um, trying to start a small uh, wine festival in October. That's still tentative, but um, just something that's in a in conversation uh, stage right now. Um, let's see. Go ahead. <laughs> uh, ours, uh, that runs the Magnolia Antique Store and the Wisteria. Um, in other years, he's, he's done the antique and vintage market outdoors on First Street, and he gets some merchants participate, a lot of independent antique vendors bring things, and he didn't get to do it last year, and we talked to him. He hasn't given us the application yet, but he's thinking about having that going on while the uh, Renaissance Festival's at the Cottonwoods, then people could be downtown looking at the outdoor antique market also. So he's thinking about that weekend of May. The the antique vintage market that she's talking about, every every time uh, Art has one of those, it's wildly successful. I wish there was some way we could talk him into doing like every month. But are those the ones that go on in front of the uh, post office? Correct. Yeah. 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 He he curates that stuff so well that it, um, you know that could easily be just be like a, a flea market kind of. Right. Vibe, but the stuff that's there is pretty phenomenal. I mean, Art does a great job with it. Nothing yeah, against flea markets. I didn't want to disparage flea markets, but this is right. just a, a little bit different uh, setup. Uh, yeah, if he could do that like, every week, it would be brilliant, but I don't think he's interested in making that his full time job. Yeah, probably not. Yeah. <laughs> um, I would. Um, okay, moving on to some other things. Um, in terms of uh, like movies and conventions, I've started my like I think it's uh, the way my brain is thinking about the movie industry and films that get shot here now is, for the most part, f movies that are filmed in Guthrie that's our version of conventions. When you think about it, this is these are these are small conventions that show up and post up for a long time, and so. Um, yeah, I, I view uh, the film industry as kind of Guthrie's built-in convention industry. Um, I think since our last meeting in September, the, the Reagan film, uh, they had a few more weeks of filming after our last meeting. They got about three quarters of the way done 
with that uh, that production, and they, they they ran into a kind of like a series of both you know, the the COVID complications at that point kept delaying things and delaying things till they got uh, the the time of year was starting to get thrown off. The schedules with actors were getting thrown off, so they had to kind of hit the pause button. Um, but uh, each of you should have a handout with uh, an, an economic uh, impact report from, yes sir, uh, from what was spent up to that point by the film locally. So Verla did a bunch of uh, data collection. Uh, the location manager for the film also was able to provide a bunch of stuff for us. And so that's not a complete picture of e like every dime that was spent by the movie in Guthrie but it gives you a rough idea that a movie that size uh, spends an enormous amount of money locally. It's a, it's a big economic boost. Um, so that gives you a sense of what that size movie can do in a town Guthrie size. Are they coming back to finish up production then? Uh, hopefully so. Uh, the last I heard is, and it's not, not guaranteed or for sure, but pr most likely, um, uh, midsummer is what they uh, they'll probably probably be looking at. Uh, they've got two or three more like big scenes that they didn't get to finish, and I th I think that they'll be back to fit to, to to shoot those, unless they can just figure out some way of doing that super cheap in California in you know on a soundstage. I don't think that they'll be able to do that. So I'm look I'm looking to see them back this summer which would be great. Um, also, uh, earlier this, uh, this spring, a movie called God's Not Dead, for part of like a franchise of movies, they filmed uh, most or all of that film uh, here in Guthrie. Uh, another movie that, uh, that, filmed, that was, was filming in Guthrie prior to uh, the pandemic, uh, a, a, a family film called Enslaved by Ducks, ducks as in like quack quack ducks um they didn't get to finish everything the first time around they came back and filmed uh the remaining scenes of that uh in guthrie and luther and a couple other spots um but they were here a few weeks ago um i think there was one scene from a movie called for the love of money that was filmed i believe they were at the the old jail cells at the county courthouse uh, a Netflix documentary called Finding Sharon. They filmed at least uh, a couple of scenes uh, in town uh, at uh, the, the temple, and I think another location that's escaped my brain right now. Um, and so uh, the, the film incentive uh, program that's run through the state, uh, Chuck Hall, our uh, our senator, senator, representative, yeah, senator. 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 senator, senator. I get that wrong every dadgum time. Um, he uh, uh, he has legislation to to uh, I expand that incentive uh, in different ways. That's uh, that's uh, working its way through the, the legislature. That uh, that's a super important piece of the puzzle. Uh, just about every film that gets done in Guthrie probably wouldn't happen in, in Oklahoma uh, if it wasn't for that incentive rebate. It's a, um, for better or worse, it's just one of those competitive processes between states now. Um, if you don't have a, a competitive in incentive program for your state, most movies go to a different state. So um, I'm glad that, uh, that Senator Hall uh, has been working on that for us. Um, let's see, here before long, we've got two, two movies that would be filmed back to back uh, in Guthrie in their entirety here. So that'll be a couple months of, uh, of these two movies being uh, posting up here locally. Then uh, I, I believe that Reagan should be back after that midsummer sometime. Um, we're, we're constantly uh, pitching Guthrie to um, producers and location managers. The, the state film office is super helpful with that. Um, it's a pretty constant 
process of them saying, hey, we've got someone looking for this. Uh, and, uh, and so we're always saying, oh, we've got this, 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 this. And we shoot it back to them. And then um, it's, it's not a, uh, it's kind of like a, um, you pitch, you know, 12 or 13 times and then you end up with one. It's not a super, uh, you know, 100% guaranteed kind of thing, but uh, the state film office is a huge help with getting movies here. Um, in terms of promoting filming in Guthrie, we're, we're about as busy as we can be. Uh, so I don't think that there's a um, like outreach and promotion of that kind of stuff. I think that we, um, uh, we would have to have more like staff time to be able to wrangle more than we wrangle now. So it's a, it's a good mix right now. Um, and you say we're as busy as we can be. Do you mean that in a lodging sense, like a, the capacity of oh. us infrastructure wise to support filming or? Um, not exactly. Okay. I, I was really referring to s staff time okay. in terms of like, okay, we need this. Oh, right. okay. Well, we, uh, you could do this, 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 this in terms of locations. To your point, with like local uh, capacity, on the like uh, lodging side, I think we're good. We could we could handle a lot more on okay. the lodging side. But there are like, the more I learn about it, it's interesting that there there are certain other areas of you know capacity, uh, whether it's parking. Parking is a like I didn't I had no idea until recently that parking is such a complicated thing um uh you know they've got the the big studios that are opening in oklahoma city which are fantastic but they're going to have you know monumental parking problems for those large films that are shot downtown oklahoma city um and on a smaller scale we'll have similar issues of like okay you're going to shoot here uh you need to have enough parking for you know especially for a larger film like reagan or, or larger the parking, you can make it work, but you also have to be able to like, you know, make residents in a, in a neighborhood not hate you forever. <laughs> or uh, there's also like capacity for like, you know, trash collection. A movie that size produces mountains of trash. And so there are, there are a lot of logistics involved in it that we're still like learning how to, like the, the movies are figuring it out with Guthrie, staff is figuring it out with them. And so uh, it's a good challenge to, to have, but we're still, still figuring it out. Do we have, so you mentioned like they'll call, so do we have a pitch deck of, you know, already established of here are high res images of all these potential shooting locations that we know you, we can get access to for your film, blah, 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 blah. You, you guys already have all those things and Yes, okay. um, we have uh, we have a website that uh, that Sean Rooney on staff built for us that to be that pitch deck for us, okay. um, and it includes even, like you know instructions on uh, permitting and different things too locally, uh, and also the state film office has a locations directory that uh, has tons of Guthrie like lo you know location opportunities on their site too. Nice, so, good. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Okay, a few more things and I'm done yapping. Um, just in terms of general information, uh, the city just received a million dollar grant to expand the sports uh, complex on the west side. So right now, and I'm gonna get these details totally wrong because it's kind of just outside of my wheelhouse, but there's like, currently there's a, you know, a certain number of softball fields that get used on the west side. So uh, this million dollar grant, there's three softball fields, according to Mr. Stratton. And so the, 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 this uh, recent grant will go to adding more softball fields and improving the ones that we have. Um, and like those kind of opportunities are big for uh, tournaments, tourism, uh, being able to host different kinds of tournaments. And it's gonna be, it's gonna be a long process of expanding that facility over time. This isn't just like a one-time you know, we're gonna do this and then boom, we have a fantastic, you know, sports complex that will attract teams from all over the state. Um, but this is like a, a brilliant first step to getting there. Uh, so that, uh, that 
that grant will be used to expand the sports complex up there. So if you're going on to the west side up uh, 33, kind of over there behind the hospital is where those fields are located. Um, someone who plays on those fields, I'm very happy that they're... Oh, good, good. <laughs> um, another grant that the city was able to get, uh, well, actually, the city staff, the chamber, and Meridian worked on a grant to to help Meridian launch their uh, workforce training program for the film industry. So uh, the Meridian campus that's being built down on South Division, one of its programs that would be offered is for, is for folks who want to learn how to get jobs in the film world. So, and it's all like, you know, behind the camera type jobs. So uh, we were working on this program that, uh, we were awarded $100,000 to, uh, Basically, it'll be like a, being able to pinpoint what those film industry needs are, how to develop that curriculum and uh, classwork, and then to market that program once Meridian's up and running down here on, on the vision. And uh, the Guthrie Chamber is going to be the, the fiscal agent for that funding. So they, they're going to manage the, the, the paperwork side of that stuff. Uh, Verla already talked about spring break, lazy east of. Um, uh, let's see. Okay, one last thing, and this isn't, this is like a, just a general perception type thing. Uh, I've lived in Guthrie for about 17 years now. Uh, in terms of the projects that are going right now in town, like construction, renovation, investment, and different things, like residential side of stuff, retail side of stuff, folks that are looking at Guthrie for you know business opportunities. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen it as, as active as it is right now. I think this is a, uh, a really exciting time to, to be working on things in Guthrie. There's just uh, a wild amount of potential rolling around. Uh, not just potential, but things that are actually happening. So um, if you're wandering around town and you see just construction all over the place, uh, it, it can be a little bit inconvenient here and there, but that's way better than the, than, uh, than the opposite of just nothing happening. So um, yeah, every time you see some construction going on, that's an awesome thing. And there's, there's an awful lot of it that's going on now and it's, and, and it's on the verge of uh, going on for lack of better phrases. Um, all right, board comments. On the cycling event, has he shown any, or hinted at a need or interest in us supporting that at all? He, um, uh, we've chatted about it a little bit. Uh, uh, if he does, uh, it'll be pretty minimal. Okay. Um, he funds most of that through just the registration costs. Well, right. Yeah. And uh, uh, even though that's the case, I believe Prairie Wolf is going to be kind of like a presenting sponsor for that event. Okay. So. Nice. So. Let's get more of those. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> <laughs> Any other board comments? I, I had a question. When did you say that the Jelsma Stadium road, when does that get done? That's an excellent question. Um, I can't say for sure, you know, those kind of construction projects are pretty mysterious in terms of timelines. But as of right now, um, city manager and public works, they believe that it'll be far enough along by 89ers to where like, you know, right now it's a giant hole in the ground. By, by parade day, they're expecting the, it to be filled up to, you know, street level. Probably, they probably won't have pavement and those kind of things, but it'll be, safe enough to where they can back all those barricades back to the actual construction projects, you know, space, and then the parade entries can go past it at that point. In terms of when it'll be 100% paved and back to normal, I don't know exactly. Any other uh, board stuff? Yeah, I've got, I want a clarification on something. So this medieval fair from Norman, that's coming here this year. We have confirmation of that. Uh, yes, and it's not necessarily like that the medieval fair is moving to Norman. 
they're just not doing what they normally do in Norman. So John Pagonis has, is organizing a, a Renaissance fair here. Right. And so, but I mean, it's a, it's a specific thing. The, the medieval fair that was going on at Norman is coming here for this year. No. Not, a, not exactly. It's, no. it's, a, just it's a, set a, another one. Just, yeah. a, just an additional one. Yeah. Yes. Correct. Okay. Like, I don't know. Like, Norman might have a Renaissance fair next year. And they might continue on with their annual, I don't know. But um, because they're not doing their normal thing this year, uh, Mr. Bogonis is kind of, you know. Saw an opportunity. Exactly. It's a great opportunity. Yeah. You know how many people show up to that every year? Um, talking to John, he's expecting, a, you know, a few thousand folks. Okay. Just a few thousand? <coughs> All right, um, so yeah, I guess my other question is, um, it, did, it wasn't addressed in the minutes from the last meeting, but we've budgeted for $20,000 again. I was just my kind of questions when you were mentioning budgets earlier. <coughs> last year, everything got canceled and we only spent money for the fireworks, right? Correct. That was one check for $5,000. Correct. So $15,000 of our 2020 budget was not spent. So, we don't have extra money rolled over this year to do more to try to jumpstart the town again? The, correct, because uh, <coughs> hotel motel revenue from last year was uh, way down. Like we, there's, uh, if, if all the events last year went off like they were planning on, uh, it would have been a, a challenge to, to fund all those things based on last year's hotel motel revenue. So, yes. Okay. Last year's revenue funds this year's budget, I assume. Yeah. What was the question? Sorry. Last year's revenue funds this year's budget. budget. In terms of estimates for yeah. what, what's estimated for this year's, we, uh, uh, we estimated that hotel motel revenue would rebound for this budget year. And those, from a, uh, from a municipal budget side of things, those are always, you know, hopes and dreams and estimates, so. Uh, so did the previous year's budget roll into this year's? Is that what you're asking? Right, I mean, the money was budgeted. It wasn't a thing, it was in the budget, because we all looked at it together. And we all went over it. Right. Right? Mm -hmm. Okay, so it was in the budget. So it didn't just disappear, it was already budgeted for. Yes? Because of 2019, right? So the 2019 money came in, that pays for 2020, 2020 pays for 21. That's not, that's not really how it works. Uh, like, so the revenue that comes in right. for this quarter is paying for expenses uh, as we go throughout the year. It's not that like last year's revenue it, like, builds up into a giant pot and then we spend it the next year. It's uh, uh, as the revenue comes in, then we have expenses. Okay. Apologize, I didn't think that's how a budget worked. So just a little clarification. So it's just estimated. Okay. Well, if I understand right, we're not actually a, I mean, we're an advisory board. Oh, sure. So we're not, we don't have a specific budget given to us by the city, right? Mm, no, but if there was extra money to try to help jumpstart Guthrie back on this little rebound we're doing, I would want to scrape every dollar we could to help jumpstart us. Oh, absolutely, for sure. That's, that was my question. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, trust me. If uh, if there is uh, if there is money that can be used on like like what you mentioned, like some, some sort of kickstarting the economy type thing, uh, the the city manager will will absolutely make sure that that uh, that occurs. Any other board comments? 
All right. Uh, and that's it. Um, I don't think we have to have a, a motion to adjourn, but if it feels the need, we can. I'll make a motion to adjourn. Okay. Motion. Second. Second. All in favor of getting out of here? Aye. Anybody opposed? <laughs>